today I want to talk to you about corner window units. Now, as you can see, we've put this, we frame this corner window into an ICF wall. And what I want to talk to you about today, and like a lot of people in our neck of the woods, they always want to compare ICF to wood construction. And I actually love doing that because we can beat them up pretty good. And I'll show you why. cool architectural feature. Now the point that I want to drive home today is with an ICF wall I have all the strengths we could possibly need. I don't have to lose sleep at night wondering oh is that wood beam going to creep down or what's going to happen there and I don't lose an ounce of insulation value. I don't have any thermal bridging, I have continuous insulation and I have attachment inside and out. With an ICF I don't need to do anything else like what you see is what you get Every eight inches, I can attach drywall to, and on the outside, I can attach my siding to, okay? So let's go into how the physics work and, and kind of show you the difference of what, how to compare to a wood, okay? So here's our window. Now, the header that would support this structure is called a cantilevered lintel, or cantilevered header, or a beam if you really want to break it down to simple terms. But what happens is, is whatever the length of the opening is, now I'll just measure down low because it's easy, 75 inches. So to the edge of here, so whatever my header is, I need twice that length to tie back to. So I would need back into here somewhere, but because I have a bifold door going in, I would actually need if I was doing wood, I'd have to do a, a header all the way back to this corner, right? Now, how the physics works is this is a cantilever. So at this point here, all the force, now this is actually holding up a second floor of the building too. It's pushing down here and the back end is wanting to lift up. So this is our fulcrum or our pivot point. So in a wood frame, what you'd have to do is you'd have a giant post here that would have to point, like point low to a foundation and then back over here, you'd have to somehow pin this and, and I don't know if you'd use like metal strapping, you'd actually have to pin this post down to your foundation to prevent this from lifting and doing something weird. Now with ICF, it's a whole monolithic system. Like this, all this concrete goes down into the basement. It's all tied together with rebar. There's no individual components that can pull apart from each other, right? So doing this custom house, I'm not gonna lose sleep at night because A, we had it engineered and I know that concrete is dimensionally stable. It's never gonna move, right? It's not gonna fail. Whereas wood, it's like, man, a lot of things can change if you get some leaky wall or some rot, then you all of a sudden your components start letting loose. Okay, so that's just something to think about. You get all the strength in the world and you don't lose any R value. So what I forgot to say is I never actually engineered this for wood because why would I? I don't build with wood anymore or not for walls anyway. So whatever, if you had a 16 inch lintel, let's say, you'd have all that heat loss, all that thermal bridging from that end all the way to the corner plus a big post here, plus whatever here. So all those, all the wood inside your wall is a thermal break. Same here, like actually what we did in this scenario is because the structure is in the concrete inside the wall and to be safe, we actually took our rebar. So we just changed how much rebar we use. We use more bars on the bottom, more bars on the top, and we just changed the configuration to get the to meet the engineer's notes. But what we did is we actually tied this and we went two times past here inside the wall. So if you were to do that redundancy with wood, then you would again, you'd have a header coming all the way over to here. If you wanted to be extra safe like we did, then you'd have to pin this back down. So you'd have a lot of heat loss, right? 
So we'll show you how much heat loss you'd have throughout the rest of this house. And we'll show you all the windows that we did. Plus I'll show you some of the bucks and how we, how we actually formed the windows when we actually, before we poured. Same here. You'd have a, you'd have a lintel or a header all the way over, over to here. And then you'd have to pull that down and make sure that your wood components don't separate as that cantilever is pushing down, down, down over time because you have a roof load on it, all right? And if you want to do the double safety, then you, this one wouldn't work with wood because you don't have two times the width back. But with rebar and concrete, I can just take this lintel that's just essentially rebar and concrete and I just wrap it around the corner and that gives me my strength, right? And it's all monolithic. And yeah, let's just show you a few more of the windows. So here's the main floor bedroom. And you can see we actually have two corner windows in here, just take a pan around, but the big gigantic one, it's got quite the view, it's amazing. And one thing I wanna put point out about this window that you couldn't do with wood either, is we have seven feet in width here, but we only have five feet over here. So you couldn't do this with wood because you'd need two times back. But like I said, we can just take our lintel and wrap it around the corner and it gives her our strength because concrete's monolithic. So here's the bedroom on the second floor directly above the main floor bedroom. And you can see this both corner window units. But what's cool and the other thing I like about it is that when we formed up these bucks before we placed them in the wall, we braced them and made them perfectly square in both directions. So um, you can look at some of the images that we have, but this corner we can make perfectly square. We can brace it perfectly to dimension and have it 100% set. And then when we stack the block around it, we know that it's not moving, that that window is square. So we, it's not like framing where you could get out from below and above the window. Okay. And then over here, this is what it looks like as we prep for concrete and we let that, we do our pour and then we let that sit for two or three weeks, let the concrete cure. But that's what it looks like before you strip it down. But anyway, at the end of the day, I think that as more and more people learn about the ICF system, they'll realize the benefits. And most of all, like I said, all the structure in the world and you don't lose any R value.